Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, liebe Aussteller, uh, the exhibitors. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, hello, Stefan. Hello, Benedict. Yeah, you are all here, so we are very happy about this. And we can also welcome Maya Sisse hello, from Swapcard. <laughs> hello, Maya. Lovely hello. to see you and hear you again. Uh, so we will continue in English. Uh, the exhibitors, the exhibitors. Uh, we thought that this would be very important today to have this webinar when I talk to you uh, to convince you to exhibit. I always said very important thing, the B2B matchmaking is the heart of EdTech. And it really is. Uh, already 15 years we are uh, doing this. And if you do it well, you really will be successful at EdTech 2023. So, um, but you have to use the tool well. You have to register, and this is not uh, usual that you can put videos in, photos. You have to really uh, show that you are a very innovative uh, company with lovely product products, and um, I've seen that only some of you have done this. And what is also from my uh, uh, point of view, from um, my experience, you have to place ongoing requests. You can do this to other exhibitors. And now we are chasing all the exhibitors, which has not yet done this, to register in the B2B matchmaking platform. And is it 30 minutes at your booth? And there is from our my, my team also uh, one lady who will also care for you uh, that you have enough meetings beforehand and during the show. And in the end of the webinar, it would be lovely if you could tell us whom you would like to see. We are inviting uh, procurement uh, supply chain managers from all the major OEMs and first years, some exhibit already from the future air mobility and some exhibit also as OEM. And I have already confirmations. I will then let you know whom I have and I would like to know uh, because we would like you, and I think Maya, that's also your concern, to really uh, to fall in love with AirTech and with SwapCard. <laughs> and really to uh, be fit for it and use it well. And you have to be active. You can do that in the morning or in after work, um, but you have really have to do it well. And let us always know if you need help because we are very service oriented and we really want you to be successful and to have a, a nice show, a successful show and make the best out of it and also for the future went in 2024. So thank you very much to all of you. This webinar will be also recorded to those who couldn't take part, unfortunately. So thank you very much. Thank you, Diana. So um, yeah, hi everyone, I'm Mariam. I'm a customer strategy manager at SwapCard, and I will be showing you through the event platform how you can set up and edit your profile and booth and um, make the most of the uh, networking and lead retrieval both on site and online and B2B matchmaking as well. Um, we will be answering questions after the webinar, so feel free to answer, ask any questions in the chat as we go along so that we can answer them afterwards as well. So just share my screen. <laughs> I think I'm sharing my screen, sorry. Or, oops. Okay. I think this one should work. Um, 
So you should have all received an email already giving you access to the platform. So in case you haven't done so already, you can access uh, the event through this email with the onboard now button. And you can also already download the mobile app, which is a nice thing also to get familiar with because that's what you most likely will be using on site. So look out for the email from AirTech uh, coming from no reply at swapcard.com um, and you will be able to gain access to the event this way. Can um, you do it a bit bigger? Is it possible? You can do it bigger, yes. A little bit, yeah. Just uh, you should be seeing the event platform now. Yeah. Okay. If it's big enough, uh, let me know. I can do a little bit bigger. Otherwise, it might cut things out. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, okay. So um, the view that attendees have and that you have as exhibitors is quite similar. You will be uh, working with the event platform, which looks like this. You have some navigation buttons at the top and in the center. As we get closer to the event, more buttons will appear, more content will appear. But at the moment, this is what you will be having access to. Um, one of the first things I always recommend for you to do once you get onto the platform is to edit your profile. So if you click on the edit button here, you will be able to see the edit next to each of these sections. So at the moment, it's all the information you added in your registration, but I advise you to go into your profile and add any other information that you'd like to share about yourself. Uh, you can also add some extra contact details as well. Uh, the thing to note about the contact details is at the moment, if you are not connected with somebody else yet, um, it is hidden. So nobody will be able to see your email address unless you or they have sent a connection request and it has been accepted. Um, so just in case you were wondering, it's not visible to everyone, just those that you have connected with. You can also access your profile by clicking on the drop down arrow here on the right. I click on my profile, I'll have the same view. I can also see a list of my contacts if I've made them throughout the event. I can order them, I can search for a particular one and I can download them as an Excel file. And I also have a settings option. So if I'd like to see the platform default language in a different language, I can select a different language. Um, if I'd like to determine if I am visible online or not, I have the option here, display my status. So I have it turned on. That means that if I am on the platform, there will be a green dot displayed on my profile for everyone to see. If you would like to hide that and you want to be online, but don't have, don't want to have that green dot, then you can turn that off here as well. You can edit your preferences for emails. So in case you don't want to receive certain emails, you can untick these boxes here. If you would like to log into the platform with another email, a secondary email address, you have the option to add an email address here as well. If you'd like to change your password, you can do it from here and you can also delete your account. So if I go back to the home button, um, I'll go through some of these buttons that you can see here. So if I go to the exhibitor button, this is where all of your exhibitor booths will be hosted. Um, at the top, there are some AI recommendations. So if other event participants are looking through uh, the platform, they go to the exhibitors button. The first thing that they're seeing is some recommendations. So depending on the information added to personal profiles, as well as the actions that are taken throughout the event, some recommendations will be given by the system. Uh, they can click on the profiles from here. They can click on the X if they'd like to. But as you can see here as well, some of the first ones that are being um, shown are ones that are filled out. They have a logo added as well. Um, so it's nice to, to add that here. As we can see, there are a lot of booths that don't have any logos yet. So it's not as attractive to click on to. If I click on this one, for example, I can see that this is a good exhibitor has already added a video. They have added a background, a logo. They've added some extra information about social media and contact details and documents and links. And you can see their team members here as well. So there's a, an example of a booth that's already well filled out. Um, and if I go to the demo profile example that I've created as well, this is basically a blank booth. You don't see much information there at all. Um, what you do see as well here, uh, the options to um, for other participants to bookmark the booth, um, so to have that available in their personal section later on. Uh, you can also 
chat with the booth. So all of the team members will receive the message sent here on the booth profile. And you also have the option here on the exhibitor profile to send a meeting request to the team. So I select a slot, a 30 minute slot, and I see these options available here. So I can, for the first option here, if I want to add more team members, so if I want to add more than just myself to the meeting, I can add some additional um, potential connections. Uh, I can add up to nine other participants, so that's 10 participants in a meeting in total. I can just select them from here and invite them that way. Uh, I can also select a location. So each of your exhibitor locations um, have been added to your booths. So here, this is the location that was added to my demo booth. If I click on the location, that's where I would like to meet. I can send a message with the meeting request, and then I can send the meeting request off to the booth. And then as you can see here, I've sent a meeting request and it hasn't been answered yet, and I can see that on the profile. We'll show you later on how you can respond to that as well. Now if I move on to the attendees list, it's quite similar as well to the exhibitors. You have the AI recommendations here at the top for other attendees that you would like to meet. Of course, if you click the X, the AI will learn from that. If you think it's not a relevant uh, recommendation, you can just click the X here. You see the people that are online with the green dot listed here. Then you see here on the left hand side different filtering options for all of the attendees of the event so you can sort by these different options here if you're looking for someone particular you can just add their name here in the search field if you'd like to see who is free during a certain time you can select the available to meet field filter if you for example want to meet somebody at 9 30 a.m you can just select that slot and you'll be able to see everybody who was available during that time The other option that you see here as well is the visibility option. What this means that if you turn this off, that means you're not listed on the attendees list. You're also not listed visibly as a team member on your exhibitor booth. Um, so not visible anywhere. Nobody will be able to reach out to you personally. If you turn it on, that means that you're visible and others can also reach out to you and you can reach out to them. Um, what you will notice here as well is there are different icons on the right hand side. So you have the icon to send a connection request quickly. Uh, you can see that here. If you are already connected with someone, the icon will look a little bit different, as you can see here. Um, and I'll show you briefly as well the differences there. So here you can see there's not much information to see about this person yet, but I have the option to send a connection request to this personal profile with a message, and I also can send a meeting. A thing to note here is that if you send a meeting request and the meeting request is accepted, that is the same as a connection request. Um, so that means that you will be connected, they will be on the contact list, and you'll be able to see their information as well. If I go back here, I can see this is already a connection that I've made previously. I see the messages that I've sent to this person here. As you can see, I can also see their email address. I can see if they're a member of an exhibitor booth. And I also have these scoring options here on the right hand side. So this is very interesting for lead retrieval if you're making contacts on site or online and you want to rate them in any way, you want to qualify them, you have the option to give them a rating of one to five stars. You can add some tags. So it's a good idea before the event as well to have a think about what kind of tags you want to give to the different um, attendees that you might be meeting on site. You can add some notes about the conversation that you've had here as well. Um, and then you can also export the contact directly or print the contact, or if they're no longer relevant, you can also delete them as well. Um, so this is how you can make a connection uh, on site. Uh, you can also make a connection with the mobile app um, because here we have an attendee who has a QR code ticket. And if I open here my mobile app, I see I have my mobile app. It looks quite similar to the web version, um, but what you do have here that you do not have on the web version is this camera icon here on the bottom right hand side. Um, so this is how you'll be able to scan the QR codes of the people that you're meeting on site. So if I open the camera icon, 
I lift it up to the QR code. I can see the contact is saved and I see the person's profile. I can book a meeting with them. I can tag them and score them as I could also on the web app. So when you're on site, this is a handy tool to use um, to just scan. You can also scan business cards just by selecting this card option here. So it doesn't even have to be a QR code. If you like working with business cards, then you can also scan those as well. And if the email is matching to the email of the profile on swap card, then you'll have that lead in the exhibitor center as well that you can export. So that's a handy way of how you can make the leads on site as well as online. So definitely take a look through the exhibitor list, the attendee list ahead of the event. You have the meeting options available. Um, so you see when somebody is available, when they are not available. Um, you can already plan your schedule, when you would like to meet who, and, and also have that all planned out so you're ready to go during the event. Um, so if I go to the My Events section here, which is the last button on the event, any of the actions that I've taken throughout the event will be summarized here. So if I have anything in my schedule, so if I have a meeting in my schedule, if I have sessions that I have bookmarked, so later on when the agenda is live and you want to bookmark or register for certain sessions and create your own schedule, these sessions will be appearing here. Um, and you'll be able also to download it as a PDF. You can see just in general, all of your meetings here. Uh, you can also uh, determine your availability. So if you personally are not available during a certain time of the day, you can click on manage availability to see all of the slots that the organizer has made available. If I say I'm not available during lunchtime, for example, I just deselect these slots and then nobody will be able to request a meeting with me during this time. You can also make yourself available for a whole day in case you are not attending during that day as well. You will be able to see a summary of all of the connections that you've made throughout the event. You'll be able to see the bookmarked companies, so exhibitors that have been bookmarked, as well as um, your wish list as well here. All right. So if we skip now to the exhibitor profile that I'm logged in with, I can see here there's a meeting request that has come in. So somebody has sent the exhibitor booth a meeting request. Um, if I'd like to reply to that, I can click on reply here as well. And I am transported to the exhibitor center. So that's one way that you can come to the exhibitor center. If I go back to the event, you can also see here there's the exhibitor name underneath my profile. If I edit that, I will also come to the exhibitor center. And if I click on the drop down arrow here, I also have the exhibitor center as an option to select. So there are different ways that you can get to the back end of your booth in order to manage your meetings and edit your booth as well. Now we can also see here there are some red dots on the top right hand side. Um, so as you saw previously, there was a notification that came down. So any notifications that I've made throughout the event, they will be summarized here under the notifications tab. Any of the messages that are sent to me personally or to my booth, they will be listed on the chat. Um, so here I have the message that was sent to me um, about a connection to me personally. If I'd like to select my exhibitor booth, so I want to see what messages were sent to my exhibitor booth, I can select the exhibitor name and I can see the message coming here. So any of the uh, messages sent to the booth will be sent to all team members that are part of the booth and all team members will be able to respond and see all of the messages here from the chat. You can also start a video call from here if you would like um, and also from your personal booth chat, you can also start a group chat. So if you've made some connections uh, throughout the event and you would like to start a group chat with any of these connections, you can select from the people here and start a group chat or a group video call as well. I go back to home. And I now edit my exhibitor booth.
I can see the first uh, tab here on the left hand side uh, is the home message for the exhibitor center. So the exhibitor center is the back end of my exhibitor profile. Um, this is a message um, that you can read through from the organizer. Um, and then you can also take the next step in order to edit your company information. So this was my blank booth that I had created. Um, and I can just go through and click these edit and customize options in order to make changes to how my company is being displayed. So the first thing I can do is add a header image to the booth. If I'd like to have something more dynamic, like the booth that I've shown you with the video, I can also add a video. So as long as the video is hosted on YouTube, on Vimeo, or another platform providing an iframe, you can add the Vimeo here or the video here. You can add a background image to the booth as well to make it look a little bit different than any of the other pages. You can add a logo and you can also change the name here. Any of the fields that are grayed out, you, not, you won't be able to change. You can add some information about the booth. You can add some contact details and social media information as well to the booth here. One thing you can also do is add an advertisement. So the advertisement would be displayed on the right or the left hand side of the booth um, or on the mobile app as a pop up. So it can redirect to any external page that you would like to redirect to. You have the sizes required for the images always listed here uh, and you can add the URL here and then create the advertisement. And if you'd like to add some documents and links, you can do so as well. You can upload it directly with this icon here or add the URL um, and add a title and a brief description if you would like to as well. Then you have the team members page, so you'll be able to see all of your team members that are part of the booth. Your profile will be listed here on the right hand side and you have some options here as available as well. So as I showed you previously from the attendees list where you can edit your visibility, you also have the option to edit your visibility here as well. Um, but just to know that it will change the visibility also on the attendees list. So it's just one visibility throughout the whole event. If I turn it off, I'm not visible. If it's on, I am visible. Then you have the connections uh, that you uh, share your connections with the team or not. So I have this turned on. What this means that any connections I make on site, if I'm scanning the badges, if I am sending connection requests online, I have it turned on. That means that these connections will be listed here in the exhibitor center under the leads board for every team member to see and also to export. If I would like to not share my contacts that I make throughout the event with the team, then I can have it turned off. Then I can download my contacts personally, but not everybody else in my team. Then you have the option to add a team member. So if that team member is already registered for the event, then you will be able to add the email address of that team member um, and add them as a team member to the booth yourself, but they have to be registered for the event. All right. Then we get to the leads board. So the leads board is your area um, where all of the information or the, any of the actions you take throughout the event in terms of making connections, making meetings, sending messages to people, um, people who are downloading your documents or who are um, looking at your booth, you will be able to have an overview of that here. So as you can see, some actions have already been taken here for uh, my booth so I can see one person has bookmarked and I've made one connection. I haven't had any uh, virtual booth visits yet but they will be updated soon as well. I can see I've already got one connection so here's a summary of the connection that I have made um, and you can also export the lead here as an Excel file. You can either export all leads or define a specific date and lead um, in order to download that. So here you can choose from what time frame you're looking at. So if you want to download the leads that you have for a certain day only, you select that time frame. You select if you're looking for people you've connected with, if you're looking for people that you've had meetings with, chat conversations with, or who've just visited. You have these different options here. So you don't have to download everything. You can just select certain things, or you can say you just want all information, and then you can start the export there as well. Just give you a brief look into what that will look like. 
So here is an Excel file. I can see the information about the user. I can see their name that have, has been added to the platform, the email address. Some fields are blank. So if the fields have not been filled out by the person or they have not been added in the registration process, then you won't have that information, but you will have everything else. You can see how the connection was made. So it was made via request sent by the attendee. Um, you can see the date of the first connection and you can see also the exhibitor member that was responsible for this first connection as well in the report. And then you have the different tabs on the bottom here. Um, if you're looking at meetings that you've had um, confirmed or chat messages that were sent, you have those different options here as well. So you can click through to see the different information. All right, so if we go to my meetings, I see here one meeting. As you remember, I sent a meeting request as an attendee to this profile, and the meeting is now shown in my exhibitor center. Uh, if I'd like to filter according to certain members that are having meetings, I can select the members from here. Um, if you have different status of meetings, or if it's confirmed, or if it's pending or canceled, you'll see them listed here at the top as well. Um, so here you have the information about the uh, the person, you have the time that was requested and the location. And if I click on reply, I now have the option to either accept or decline the meeting. If I do not accept or decline, then the meeting is pending. So it's not confirmed or anything. I have to actively accept or decline and I have to select a team member who will be responsible for the meeting. So if I see here, I select myself, that means that I will be the one responsible for this meeting and I will be participating and I choose to confirm. Okay. Then I see now the status has changed from invitation to confirmed uh, mm -hmm. and I can see that the meeting is now taking place with myself um, and I will be responsible for that. If I click on edit, I can see here there's also the option to see the meeting. If I click on the meeting here, uh, I can see some more information about the, the meeting. I can see the host here and I can see that I am invited. Uh, the host can also add additional members to the meeting. So as I said, you can add up to now eight other people, but that can only be done by the host. If for any reason you are, um, yeah, late to the meeting or the meeting hasn't taken place or anything like that, um, you can also contact the person here and just send them a chat message. That would be the best way to reach out to them. If during the meeting you would like to discuss in any, um, any way, you can also click on the live discussion here and um, chat also with the meeting participants. All right, so that's for meetings. Then for availability, this should look familiar because I showed you how to edit your availability for your personal profile, but you can also do this for your exhibitor booth. So you have slots for your, for your booth available. If there is no team member available during a certain time, um, then I advise you to go through and select the, deselect those slots so that nobody can request a meeting with the booth during that time. That saves you the hassle of trying to reschedule and reaching out to the attendees. So those are the main things in terms of meetings, in terms of what you can edit in your in your profile and your booth. Um, and yeah, I think if you have any questions, I'll have a look at the chat now. Um, but also feel free to raise your hand and, and um, yeah ask anything that you would like to ask. I would have an addition, Maria, fully mm -hmm. here. Uh, and to all of you, sorry for not, for not being visible, I have uh, major internet uh, access problems today, so I decided not to show, not to use a camera because I thought it's better. Um, you started in your presentation with the, um, with the email the system sends out with the link to access, access the platform. And I have uh, received a lot of questions about this link because people didn't find it and, or they didn't find the email or so on. And for all of you, the, if you are on the AirTag website, there is AirTag website, there's a button login. 
And this login button leads you directly to this platform and to the link that was sent out by the email. So whenever you want to log into this platform, AirTag platform, log in. Perhaps this is helpful. Thank you, Ali. You're welcome. I have still a question, Stefan Bornheimer. Um, you uh, go to the start side, please, and you see four buttons. It is uh, my event. Uh, what is it? Yes, exactly. Uh, exhibitor, my event, attendees, and my ticket. And my ticket, I have not on my uh, on my application. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that will be um, released later on, closer to the event. I've just added it here so I could show you what you can do during the event and how the QR code would look like. Um, but this is one of the buttons that will be released uh, closer to the event. Okay. And the, reason, and the reason for this is that the QR codes of your tickets are transmitted later to the, this platform from our ticketing service provider. And this is why we switched it off. By the way, there will be two more buttons, agenda with the conference agenda, with all speakers and so on. Um, and Maria, what is the last one? There was another, it, it, and speakers, that you can contact all speakers directly. So you get a speaker's list and so on. Yeah. So the, they will, will be visible later. We have to transmit the conference program into this platform. And last question, the tickets for the exhibition will be sent out when? You should already have the ticket because if you do, uh, you register for this platform by buying or uh, buying a ticket or um, um, redeem your voucher. Yeah, and doing redeeming your voucher, you get your ticket and you register for this platform. I have only have. I have only kept the ticket for the event for the uh, uh, I think Tuesday evening event. No, 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 no. Uh, you no. got from my email. You have got the exhibitor passes, mm -hmm. and you've got also vouchers for your customers. And the ticket event you bought on in the ticket office on the homepage. Okay. By email, everything was sent out, right, Uli uh, Clements? Because yes. all exhibitors have received this. Okay. To be honest, I'm, I'm just checking it because you wouldn't be in this platform normally if you wouldn't have a ticket. Because I have checked yesterday my emails, uh, yeah. especially from, uh, check. from Diana. And uh, I have, I have not seen any uh, any uh, yeah ticket. Uh, what is the QR code for a ticket yeah. or or any other information uh, for for the exhibition itself huh? mm -hmm. for the entrance? Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps I've uh, overseen something. But uh, I have just sent it out once more by by a click. If you don't have it, just drop me please a message. I, I have yeah. the. Uh, um, I, I see your tickets and I have it and, and I can, you should have had it and you should have gotten it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Otherwise okay. I would send it to you manu manually by an Yeah, now you email. have it twice, doesn't it? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, please note that su only supply chain procurement R&D, R&T are emitted to the platform mm -hmm. when they do not exhibit. Uh, so this is why the platform was always rated at best in class for many. Uh, because salespeople, they can come to walk the show, but they can't enter the platform because the exhibitors in their exhibitor rate have access to all participants, procurement and supply chain managers. That's very important for you to know. Okay. When they exhibit, it's different. And then we have a VIP lounge and a VIP lounge 
uh, we will communicate the um, booth number of the lounge. It's near the conference area. There we have uh, a lady, a skilled lady, who will uh, take care of uh, the B2B meetings. Uh, so, Maya, it would be very important that we should, I don't know how this is possible technically, that we should know that if somebody would like to have more meetings during the event, or if certain um, procurement or supply chain managers, that's very important. I experienced that myself, don't show up. You know, I had at the Czech and Paris at 100 meetings, but some didn't show up. So I went to their booth. But it would be good to to know that, you know, because we are hosting this, yes? If it would click on our web or how we can manage this, this would be very important. Okay. I am so, yeah. We need to know how we can uh, manage this to have, uh, you know, to be alert and also want ah, uh, didn't show up here yeah? because anyway, we are hosting it and following this. Mm -hmm. So they would have to reach out to you to let you know. So the exhibit uh, could uh, uh, virtually and maybe in the VIP lounge, yeah, or virtually, right? Virtually, they could use the chat to to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But perhaps That's we should uh, we should communicate a phone number as well. Yeah, Diana, you said there will be a person uh, on site, a woman who will manage this on site, and her phone number. I think we should communicate this to all the exhibitors. So if a, a meeting partner doesn't show up, this phone number is the number to call immediately. Maybe the most uh, convenient way to do it. Now we have a question. Are the meetings organized online from today till the event? Um, Yes, so from the time where you have access, where you have the attendee list and the meeting slots, you can already plan to meet uh, and when to meet. So you can send out your meeting requests already until the event, and then during the event, you will be able to take part in the meetings. Perhaps we have co to comment this, the uh, procurement people, yeah, from the, the technical people, from the OEMs and so on, didn't board the platform yet. Yeah, we wanted right. to give the exhibitors the chance to to set up their profiles to make it fine to show a bit about themselves. So so some days, yeah, I, I gave the the vouchers for for B two B participants to Diana today, and so they will enter later this week, beginning of next week. Just to if if you're missing yeah. them, that's that's the reason. Uh, but Oli, we have to make sure and give calls and write to the uh, exhibitors that uh, almost all exhibitors should be in the platform registered before the procurement people, supply chain or R&D, R&T. That's very yes. important. Yes, and we have a, a supporting team in AirTag as well. So we will have a look that the meetings uh, will be accept, accepted or declined. Yeah, so that that um, meetings are not pending because this is disappointing. Yeah, and at least if someone needs help, we have a supporting team to call you. Yeah, this is important as well. This is one of the major improvements this year because we recognized that sometimes this is necessary. Yeah, yeah. Because pending meetings is not good. People have to answer. It's very important. Some more questions <laughs> from your side. Uh, maybe some question will arise after you have this meeting and after. I think Mr. Bornheim, I wanted to say something, but your your micro is off. Yes, excuse me, micro was off. 
Yeah, Stefan Bonnemer once more. Only a small question uh, because it is the first time at AirTag I am. Uh, what is about the catering? Uh, should we organize from our side the catering or how does it yeah, work? This, this is not the topic of the webinar today. Ah, okay. There will okay. be catering and you can send us an email so we will answer this to you. Perfect. If Perfect. you have questions about how to use swap card and the B2B matchmaking. Ah, okay. Good. Excuse me, please. There is another question arising. You are thinking about the conference. Mira Hoffman. Don't know. Because the press, uh, the presentations are online. Yeah, the uh, the the current version of the uh, uh, conference uh, schedule can be seen at AirTag's website. Uh, conference. Let me look. Conference and then conference program. Conference program. Twenty twenty three. Let me look. So it's online. Yeah. Main button conference and then conference program from this year. You can you can see it. And perhaps an, an additional um, comment today, it's a uh, in the PDF format. We know that this is uh, not the, the best way to show it within the next few days, or at least at the beginning of next week, we will have a different ver version, including speaker images and so on. The reason why we are using PDF currently is that it's uh, we have so many revisions that it's easier to to, to publish all the revisions every day. And, uh, um, but it will be nicer next week. I hope this answered your question, Ms. Hoffman. Um, so I would like to hear from your side now, if you have no questions to Marian. Uh, what uh, company in the beach? What is your concern? Because we have said to you, this is very unusual voucher codes to invite special. They will not. Diana, we're not hearing everything. I think it was cut off a little oh, bit. Yeah. Uh, you can send, uh, please um, let us know. All right. Now, whom you would like to see as a Of course, we that you have special wishes whom you would like to see. So please send this to us um, if you wouldn't like to write it in the chat. Uh, please send us an email. We will send it and please respond so you we know your wishes and your concerns. Okay, so if you have no questions anymore, um, we would like to um, close this webinar. Mariam, do you have any questions to this? No, no, nothing from my perhaps side. A, perhaps a further edition from my side. We will publish the, uh, the recording of this and additional information on how to use this platform on on onboarding and all the things like a tutorial and a manual on the website. Yeah, and we will send you an email as soon as it's on the website. So I think sometimes it's easier to, to read it and have an FAQ how to do this or how to do that. And so we will publish, publish it in, within the next few days. OK, great. So thank you very much for joining this webinar. Thank and you. Well, 
and uh, be sure that you have a great profile in the webinar and please be very active. And then when uh, the supply chain procurement and other participants join uh, and register, be also active and we would take sure that that you will be answered soon and that there are not many meetings pending. OK. Thank you so much and have a lovely day and uh, lots of success and a pleasant preparation. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Bye bye. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.